I could not believe the article that was in this month's Bassmaster. Super interesting. Well, I picked it up, flipped it open, and nearly fell out of my seat. There is a topic in this month's issue that I have talked about several times in some videos in the past, not to this detail or depth, but I was like, well, this is the time to go ahead and let's break this down and discuss it and see what you think. And it refers to fishing up hill now let me explain that real quickly oftentimes as anglers in the boat we're casting to the bank casting to the shoreline and fishing downhill and this is talking about just the opposite well the author michael jones interviews two anglers one of those is chris zaldane an elite series pro and the other one is bill semental and he's probably one of the most well-known big bass gurus out there and they talk about some really interesting stuff and here's the gist of it we know that bass smallmouth largemouth spotted bass whatever all kinds of predators as a matter of fact like to pin their prey up against some sort of boundary well the shoreline and the air create two boundaries where predators and bass in particular can push their prey and pin them in a corner. I've seen this so many times across the country, um, whether it's down south, up, up north, out on the east coast, doesn't matter that these bass will pin those shad or you know a school of panfish, whatever it is, they'll pin them up there and then the feeding frenzy really kicks in. So what the article is talking about is that a bait moving from deeper water to the shallows mimics those prey species getting pinned. It triggers an instinct in fish and according to Bill Semental, bigger fish when they see that bait moving up to the, towards that shoreline and moving up to where they're pinned by the air the surface of the water they're like wow this is going to be an easy meal as anglers we do the opposite just about all the time now in a couple videos in the past i've talked about this specifically fishing from deeper water to shallower water but mainly it has been when fishing points. Uh, I like to fish all angles at that point. One of the last things that I do is put that boat right up on the shoreline and fish deep to shallow. I should probably start doing that as one of the first things that I do. And then the other place that I do this all the time is when I fish saddles. I guess I didn't really put together the puzzle pieces as to why I've caught so many big fish fishing saddles, but it makes perfect sense. I'm throwing out to deeper water and then I bring it up. I always get on that downwind or down current side of a saddle, throw up on the other side and bring my lures from deeper water to shallower water, which is exactly what they are talking about. Now, if you take a look at this footage here, so let's say I go ahead and move this camera up from the deeper water to the shallows, you can see exactly from the perspective, the point of view of a predator of the bass and boy they get closer and closer and their prey has fewer escape routes and that's so critically important that's the key is the prey has fewer escape routes now not all lakes not all reservoirs not all rivers is this easily done so we can also break it down and both chris and bill talk about this in there is always be thinking about this uphill presentation but oftentimes it can be in smaller chunks coming up and over a rock coming up and over wood coming up and over a weed bed just anything where that lure is changing direction now there was one particular sentence that really, really stood out. The author says this is a prime ingredient for Zeldane and Semental to get followers to commit. And we've all dealt with this. How many times have you had a bass follow? So what they're talking about is if that bass picks up your lure and it follows out to that deeper water, the prey, your lure, has many more escape routes and oftentimes that fish gives up. Well, if that was flipped around going the other way as that prey or your lure starts to get closer to the bank, starts to get closer 
to the surface of the water, those feeding instincts can get triggered and they're gonna come after that lure. At least that is what they are saying. And I have no reason to doubt what they're saying because they've done this for such a long time. And the size of the fish that Bill catches proves that he's catching some bigger fish. Now, other things that we've talked about in past videos, especially coming into the pre-spawn or the post-spawn and, and using crankbaits, bladed jigs, deep divers, lipless crankbaits, is to back off the shoreline two or three casts. Fish a little bit deeper water. I talked about this just last week in my co-angler video that oftentimes they catch some nicer fish than the boater in the front because they are forced to, because of the situation, to often fish a little bit deeper water. Fish suspend off the shoreline a lot more than we really give them credit for. And I'm talking all kinds of fish, not just bass. I mean, here we see huge schools of bluegills that are suspended. You know, there's just all kinds of prey that will suspend out in open water. Now this open water doesn't have to be super deep water. You know, it doesn't have to be 70, 80 feet. It's just deeper water for the fishery that you are on. Now, I don't know about you, but I am always looking to catch a better quality fish, right? I think we all are. Well, there are plenty of days, especially in the heat of summer, where I will go out and it's just one pounder, one pounder, one pounder, one pounder. And that's fine. I still have a great time. But, you know, maybe I'd like to mix in a three or four or five every now and then. Well, man, I tell you what, after reading this and connecting, like I said, connecting those dots, to some of the things that I've done in the past when I've caught some better fish, when I get in one of those stretches where I'm just catching a lot of smaller bass, you better believe I'm gonna go ahead and get up on the shoreline and fish back out to deeper water. And one tactic that I do use all the time that somewhat fits with what they're saying here is paralleling a shoreline and I will cast out to deeper water and bring it back. Now it's not quite that same aggressive angle perpendicular, but it's still this idea of going from deeper water to shallow water. And I do catch lots of my nicest swim jig fish by doing that. Hey, if you would like to watch a video about five things that you should do right after you catch a bass, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life for the bass fishing life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers.